This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the sixth one in a set of further clips on computer communication and networking. It explains how computers are addressed in the Internet and how information can be routed through the Internet between attached computers. As mentioned in the previous clip, Internet addressing is an issue covered at the IP network layer 3. Every single computer attached to the Internet needs to have one Internet address, which is like its telephone number. In the original IP protocol version 4, addresses were 32-bit long, which allowed addressing 2 to the power of 32 distinct computers, which makes about 4 billion computers. Such addresses are interpreted as structured into a subnetwork number SN and a computer number A, where SN can vary between 8 and 24 of the 32-bit address, while A, the number of the computer on that subnetwork, can vary between the remaining 24 and 8 bits of the total 32. Today, 4 billion computers is clearly insufficient for the global Internet, which interconnects many more than that. Although many computers still bear IPv4 addresses, IPv6 is being deployed in parallel. It offers 128-bit addresses, which allows distinguishing between 2 to the power of 128 distinct computers, that is, in other words, 256 billions of billions of billions of billions of computers, which is clearly plenty enough, since that is more molecules than exist in the entire universe. The IP header always carries the addresses of both the sending and receiving computers. Every Internet router always maintains an internal, an internal routing table, which always indicates the shortest path or shortest route to any IP address or group of IP addresses in the Internet. This table contains two pieces of information for each target address. First of all, it contains the direction to be taken on the next hop towards the intended destination address. And secondly, it indicates the distance in terms of the number of hops to that possible target destination address. Thus, when a router receives a packet with a given destination address in its header, it simply forwards that packet onto the next router given by the routing table on the way to that destination which guarantees that the path is the shortest path to that target address. To understand how this works in practice, consider this example of a small network involving five nodes A, B, C, D, and E. The routing table at router A would be as illustrated on this slide, showing that Node B is two hops away through node D, that node C is directly reachable one hop away, that node D is also directly reachable one hop away, and that so is node E. Similarly, the routing table at router D would show that node A is directly reachable over one hop, that so is node B, and so is node E, while node C is two hops away, reachable over node A, or in fact it could be equally reachable two hops away over node E. At router C, the routing table would indicate that A and E are directly adjacent one hop away, whereas D is two hops away over A or E, and B is even three hops away over A or E and so on for the other nodes. Thus, if router A received a packet for B, following its routing table, it would forward that packet onto D. And when D receives that packet, it would forward the packet onto B, which is the final destination of the packet.